Hello chess friends, Magnus Carlsen is on an absolute bullet chess rampage. Having won his last 22 games on chess.com against top level opponents, rated near or above 3000, and getting a lot of attention by playing moves which are just unbelievably accurate and brilliant for a bullet game, or any game. Case in point, this position here which I will only cover briefly since many of you have probably already seen it by now, Magnus Carlsen, after only 10 seconds of thought, unleashed this incredible knight sacrifice. Knight takes b4. Just to draw his opponent's knight away from the defense of the f2 square. So after knight takes b4, looks like white has just won a knight. Well, now comes queen to f2, hitting this bishop. And white has a lot of defensive tries here to try to hang on to the extra piece, but all of them fail. First, let's look at the obvious, bishop takes c4. The problem with this is, there's queen takes f3, and this is a forced mate. The king must go to g1, but here comes bishop d4 check, and white's only legal move is to put the bishop in the way, after which bishop takes e3 is checkmate. Okay, so that's not working. What else can white try? There's bishop to f1. That way, after queen takes f3 check, at least you can put the bishop in the way like that, but then you lose your bishop on f4. Black has regained the piece with a dominating position. There's no longer the threat of bishop taking the rook since it's moved to g2, so that's no good. How about bishop d1 maintaining defense of the f3 pawn? Well, that runs into queen f1, which sadly is checkmate. You can try defending the bishop with the queen. Let's say queen to c2. Well, now you're dropping the knight on b4. Black is dominating with the two pass pawns no good. So what was tried in the game was rook to a2, defending the bishop with the rook. And Carlsen must have seen this move, bishop to d4, threatening checkmate here on g1. How are you going to stop that? You can't guard with the rook because you're now defending the bishop. So what was tried in the game was queen to d1. But now the knight on b4 is not protected. The rook takes it. White played bishop to g3, hitting the queen. It's a good thing Carlsen had the e3 square, or else that queen would be lost. That's the only square the queen can go to. Did he see this line earlier on when he sacrificed his knight? I don't know, but it all just worked out. Bishop takes d6, played by white, and now rook to b2, hitting this bishop with two pieces. Also attacking the rook here. So you really got to take the rook on b2, but after c takes b2, this queen has double duty, trying to defend the bishop, trying to keep an eye on this square, because there's a pawn promotion coming. So white tries to defend b1 with the bishop, but after queen c1, white resigns. The queen is attacked. Bishop c2 isn't working because simply queen takes d1. Bishop takes d1. The pawn promotes. So I don't know how many of you have played much bullet chess. I've dabbled in it, but I just can't handle it because I don't like having to choose between playing like an absolute moron and running out of time. It seems like one of the two is inevitable, at least for me. So when I see Carlsen finding these moves in just seconds, moves that I would never find even in a classical game, it really makes me realize why Carlsen doesn't really like classical chess anymore. It's because it's a waste of his time. If he can play a whole game at the level of a chess god in under 60 seconds, then why would he need to invest hours in a classical game? He's creating masterpieces in under a minute. And this is not a one-time thing. I'm going to now show you another game, another bullet game, in which Carlsen absolutely destroyed a 2739 rated master on chess.com, whose name I'm not going to even try to pronounce, with 98% accuracy, just playing like a freaking computer. How he is able to find these moves so fast is really a mystery to me. But enough said, let's let the chess speak for itself and take a look at this game. Magnus Carlsen again has the black pieces in this one minute bullet game, which begins with the move knight to f3. Carlsen plays d5. We have g3, g6, bishop g2, bishop g7. Both players fianchetto their bishop on the king side. Castles, knight to f6 from Carlsen. Now here the most popular move is the symmetrical d4, but Carlsen's opponent, for whatever reason, goes for d3. Okay, it's very playable. He's gonna go for e4 instead. So we have castles, knight b to d2, supporting e4, c5, taking more control of the center, and here we go with e4. Carlsen plays knight to c6, we got rook to e1, supporting that pawn on e4 even further. d takes e4 from Carlsen, d takes e4, and now e5. c3 makes sense, 
preventing Carlson's knight from hopping onto that square and also opening up the c2 square for the development of the queen. Queen e7 from Carlson, queen to c2, and now rook e8, which is a little strange looking. I'm not sure why he didn't develop the bishop or move the rook to the open file, but maybe he thinks at some point e5 is going to need some extra protection. I'm not sure. But we got b3 from white, preparing to fianchetto his other bishop on b2. Rook d8. So now Carlson changes his mind, wants to put the rook on the open file, and as you will see, this rook will play a key role in bringing about his opponent's demise. Makes me wonder how far ahead Carlson was looking at this point. Bishop b2. We got bishop to e6 now. Rook a d1. All very natural moves. And bishop to h6 from Carlson. And just like that, he's transformed this bishop, which was a bad bishop on g7, pointing only at his own pawn, into a good bishop on an open diagonal. He was able to do this because of the way white developed his pieces. If white had instead played a little more normally with like d4, putting the knight on c3, keeping this bishop on this open diagonal, Carlson never would have been able to get away with this. You notice with the way Carlson developed, white can't get away with the same thing. White can't play bishop h3 because this bishop's here. So Carlson has a very nice opening setup here, but the position is still roughly equal. And white continues with knight to f1 looking to redeploy to the e3 square. Rook takes d1 from Carlson. Rook takes d1. Rook d8. And now taking on d8 would be fine for white, but what's played is rook to e1. Maybe he thought this pawn on e4 was going to need a little extra protection. c4 from Carlson. A very nice move. Of course, you do not want to take on c4 as white because then bishop takes c4. White's got the split pawns. Bishop d3 is coming. No reason to allow that. What's played is better, b4, and now b5 from Carlson, just solidifying this pawn on c4 and preventing white from playing b5 himself, kicking that knight off of c6. And now, the first significant inaccuracy from white, not losing or anything, but white played knight to e3 here. Playing something like a4 or h4 would have been better, but this move runs into... A very nice move from black, which Carlson found in only 1.3 seconds. He played rook to d3. Dual threat. Always look for moves that threaten two things at the same time. Of course, this blocks the queen from protecting the pawn on e4, so knight takes e4 is a problem. Also threatening to take the knight on e3 with the bishop, and white's going to end up with bad pawns one way or another. So how should white deal with both of those threats? Turns out the best defense here would have been bishop to c1, letting the pawn on e4 go. Because after knight takes e4, sure black grabbed a pawn, but look at this bishop lurking here, looking at this knight, looking at this knight, and all you got to do is play knight to h4. This knight's under attack, can't move it or you're losing this knight, so the best thing for black to do here apparently is to take on e3, Eliminating the knight, which was watching over the d5 square, that's where black wants to put his bishop to defend the knight that way. And then there's this kind of crazy computer line. Bishop takes e4, bishop takes c1, bishop takes d3, c takes d3, and after all the smoke clears, you have this position where black has an extra pawn for the exchange and maybe only a slight advantage. So that's what white should have done. Now let's look at what white did. A very natural looking move which I probably would have played, bishop f1. Hey, let's get that rook out of there. Let's get that rook out of d3. But Carlson is going to leave that rook right where it is. He played bishop takes e3. And when I first looked at this game, I thought, okay, you need to play f takes e3. That's not what white played. But after this, black can play queen to d7 with total domination of this open file. e4 is still hit by the knight. Taking the rook on d3 is not helping. It's just replaced with a powerful passed pawn. Black is totally winning here. White is finished. What was played in the game was actually better, and it looks kind of like a mistake on the surface. Bishop taking the rook, because after c takes d3, you can't take this bishop now. The queen is hit. You have to take that pawn or move the queen, and then the bishop escapes. So black has two pieces for the rook, but it's not completely over because white can take on b5. This is what Carlson's opponent did hitting this knight on c6. So white now does have two more pawns than black has. Carlson plays queen to b7, defending his knight, which is one of his very few slightly inaccurate moves of this game. 
Apparently it was better just to play queen d6 and maintain control of this open file. Maybe he wanted to keep an eye on the e4 square. He thought maybe there'd be some threat of winning this pawn once this knight went somewhere. So what white should do now, according to the engine, is play queen d3 and take over the file himself. But unfortunately, he makes a major blunder. He plays king to g2. What could be so bad about that? Looks natural enough. Defending this knight, getting the king into a what looks like a little bit of a safer square. But Carlson, in only about two seconds, latched on to the correct idea. He played queen to d7. He takes over the file again, and now he's looking to come into h3 with check with the bishop. What's so bad about that, you might think? White's not getting checkmated. You will see very shortly. White played queen to e2. Looks very natural. Getting ready to put the rook on e1 and attack Carlson's queen, but here comes bishop h3 check. King moves to g1 and now knight to g4, hitting this f2 pawn with the bishop and the knight. You'd like to play rook to f1 to defend that way, but this bishop is watching that square now. You'd like to play rook to e2 and defend that way, but the queen is blocking. So what are you going to do? Well, you do have rook to d1. This is what white played, an attack on Carlson's queen. But Carlson had his response ready. In less than a second, he played bishop takes f2 check. And you really got to move the king. You can't take on f2, planning on taking the queen next, because black's going to play queen takes d1 check first. And white is finished. So you have to move the king to h1. So, okay, the white king is out of check. Carlson's queen is still hit. Got to do something about that, right? Well, Carlson found a killer move here in less than a second, which effectively ended the game. See if you can find Carlson's absolutely devastating move here in even five minutes. Pause the video and see if you can spot the most crushing move for black. The move Carlson played, which compelled his opponent to resign, was knight to e3. Threatening checkmate. You cannot take the queen because bishop g2 is checkmate. So what else can you try? If you take the bishop on f2, there's queen d1 check, and black is up a full piece. White only has the extra pawn, and there's a checkmate coming in nine moves, actually. If you play knight g1, there's going to be knight g4 hitting the queen. If you were to play queen e2, there's this cute move, bishop to f1. You're not taking the queen because knight f2 is checkmate. Kind of an unusual mate with the bishop and the knight there. So what else can you do? Move your queen to f3, but then there's queen d2, threatens mate here, and there's just no defense. You can only throw pieces in the way at this point, like knight e2, bishop takes e2. So an absolutely incredible game. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. And I gotta say, Despite the fact that I was a little disappointed by Carlson's recent comments expressing his disinterest in classical chess, I'm beginning to realize that we are not going to be deprived of mind-blowing chess coming from Magnus Carlson, even if he plays nothing but one-minute bullet chess for the rest of his life. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel for more content like this coming soon, and I'll see you on the next one.